now see a few of the sights we saw, and much as they may shock you, do believe me when I tell you that the reality was indescribably worse than these pictures. In 1975, the communist Khmer Rouge regime, led by a former school teacher named Pol Pot, began to decimate the country's population through a systematic campaign of forced labor, starvation, and murder. The story of Srebrenica may seem to be a freakish throwback to medieval savagery, but it's essentially a story of our times. The most time-efficient genocide in history began. Genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes. In the last century, around 200 million people have died because of a conflict. 200 million. This is, for example, around the entire population of Brazil or Indonesia. The footage you have just seen is only a small representation of a global phenomenon. Even now, in this new century, conflicts and mass atrocity crimes are still plaguing mankind. Since the Second World War, and after each conflict, the international community has found itself shocked, always seeking new ways to address these issues in order to ensure that they never happen again. Is it possible they do not realize that we shall never cease to persevere against them until they have been taught a lesson which they and the world will never forget. On Thursday the 18th of October 1945 in Berlin, the indictment was lodged with the tribunal. Thus spoke Lord Justice Lawrence on day one of the ten-month drama now ended at Nuremberg. To answer came Goering, except for Hitler, head of the Nazi state. Now he will die, hanged by the neck like a common criminal. Mr. President, the witness Nishio has been sworn and signed the oath of witness. Today we begin to cleanse the hatred that has torn apart the former Yugoslavia. A few months ago I said, this will be no victor's tribunal. The only victor that will prevail in this endeavor is the truth. Truth is the cornerstone of the rule of law and it will point towards individuals, not peoples, as perpetrators of war crimes. And it is only the truth that can cleanse the ethnic and religious hatreds and begin the healing process. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is now in session. Thousands of males were detained in horrific conditions and subsequently summarily executed. Proposing a resolution to establish a tribunal which could lead to the trial and punishment of those individuals who were responsible for the genocide. The magnitude of the crimes could not go unpunished. Between a half and one million people may have been slain in Rwanda in little over three months. La Chambre d'appel siégeante en audience publique rejette à l'unanimité chacun des motifs d'appel présentés par Jean-Paul Akayesu. Confirme la culpabilité de Jean-Paul Akayesu sur l'ensemble des chefs d'accusation retenus contre lui et confirme la condamnation à l'emprisonnement à vie prononcé. The Secretary General and Sandra Kinsen have agreed that the signing will be after the law has been adopted in, in Parliament. 
but we have to see to it that all the paperwork is properly done uh, before I, I leave uh, this time. So this is all I have to say. So are you optimistic that uh, the both sides uh, finalize everything remaining uh, before the National Assembly? We, we are working in a positive spirit as we did in March and uh, I think that uh, we will uh, have a good meeting now and I hope that we will cover all the issues that uh, we have set out on our agenda. Case 002. The trial chamber continues the hearing of evidence which began on December 5, 2011, following opening statements. The trial, for which survivors have been waiting more than three decades, has finally begun. The establishment of these tribunals have followed several trends influencing the development of international criminal justice. You have just seen examples of victor's justice with the Nuremberg and Tokyo tribunals. You have seen examples of peace establishment and truth-seeking with the tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and for Rwanda. And finally, you have seen an example of balancing victim's justice and political stability with the Khmer Rouge Tribunal in Cambodia. All of these tribunals and others have fed the development of international criminal justice. They have led to the idea that a permanent international criminal court could draw from these institutions' successes and failures to achieve a better justice. In 1998, people from all over the world gathered in Rome to attempt something that had never been done create the basis for a permanent international criminal court. In 1998, during the Rome Diplomatic Conference on the International Criminal Court, 160 countries negotiated a treaty to design the world's first permanent international criminal court. Well, will now be closed. The machine is now closed. On the 17th of July 1998, after five weeks of intense negotiations, 120 nations voted in favour and on July 1, 2002, the Rome Statute entered into force after ratification by 60 countries. The International Criminal Court represents hope. Hope that mass atrocity crimes will no longer be left unpunished. Hope that justice will eventually prevail. International criminal justice is becoming universal because more than hope, there is a need for the world to have one fair, effective, independent and permanent criminal court. One that respects the highest standards and is dedicated to the fight against impunity. The ICC represents the best opportunity for the world to find the truth and guarantee that victim's justice will prevail over victor's justice. The court has a mandate to try individuals aged 18 and above at the time the crimes were committed and to hold them accountable for the most serious crimes of concern to the international community, that of genocide war crimes and crimes against the humanity committed after the 1st of July 2002. I, Fumiko Saiga, solemnly undertake that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as a judge of the International Criminal Court honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously et que je respecterai le caractère confidentiel des enquêtes et des poursuites. And the secret of the deliberation. The ICC's judges are chosen among persons of high moral character, impartiality and integrity, who possess the qualifications required in their respective countries for appointment to the highest judicial offices. They are elected by the countries that are parties to the ICC to represent not only the major legal systems of the world, but also its diversity. An ICC judgeship is for nine years and is not renewable. This helps to ensure the judges are in a position of real independence, 
serving justice over any other considerations. Mr Lubanga has been convicted of having committed, jointly with others, the crimes of conscripting and enlisting children under the age of 15 and using them to participate actively in hostilities in the context of an internal armed conflict. Hakuna mwae, baka baka kwa kapali kunyumba, likia ni kamata kunyumba, ni kwa kunyumba, ni kwa natuanga, ni kwa tuanga sombe, kusanya ule wale basodo wale piaka, baza ziangu wako pale pembeni, baka haona gisi naenda. Si nilikuwa kabado si ya uwa mutu, mbilo kwanza kwa mata bunduki nilitetemi kaka, maike nilikuwa kasa vyo mwena tetemi kwa mbilo kwa mata ile bunduki me. Ewa, bitu ya mafiole bilikuwa kabisa ile moya ni kweli, bitu ya mafiole bilikuwa kwa, tuliona vya mingi, na sipendi naisha tupati sipendi kusema. Upende usipopenda, watakia taba ine, watano, auna ngufu ya kukatala juu, bana ume watano wakisha kukuhia frema, auna tamwa ya kukatala. Awezi kwa sadu nilifanya kwa miaka mbili silifupi. Nifanya kwa miaka mbili na nilibishi yako kila saa na kila siku. Mpaka vipu mga kimu wakili yangu. In accordance with the majority decision, Mr. Lubanga is sentenced to a total period of 14 years imprisonment, from which the time commencing with his surrender to the court on the 16th of March 2006 is to be deducted. This was the first verdict of the International Criminal Court. Congolese warlord Thomas Lubangadilo was convicted for crimes against humanity and war crimes and sentenced to 14 years of imprisonment. He will not be the last person to face international justice. These people are currently facing trial at the International Criminal Court. Some others are still on the run, even defying the arrest warrants issued against them. Nayachi <laughs> Kodrotimbi. Mbiye kia nko zu, na yachi kodro ni hape. E na yachi kodro timbi iti mungu mba aku hape, son trafik on jenera. Mbiye ke zu, mea zwa mumbi tonga na nyama, na leti ala. During the previous century, millions of people many of them children, were victims of unimaginable atrocities. The International Criminal Court symbolizes the hope that by ending impunity for such crimes, we might prevent their occurrence and contribute to the peace, security, and well-being of the world. <laughs>